Hi, it's time for some bedtime stories from Wood Library. Bernard and I are ready, so let's get started. Our first book is called Into the Castle. This is written by June Crevin with illustrations by John Bendel Brunello. Fancy paperwork. And is published by Candlewick Press. On the hill is a castle. Let's go and see. They say a monster lives inside, but no, that couldn't be. Around the castle is a moat where slimy green things grow. They say the monster swims in there, but that was years ago. Across the moat is a drawbridge that creaks and groans, they say, because the monster stamps across, but no one's here today. Beyond the drawbridge is a yard with a deep well built of stone. They say the monster comes to drink, but look, it's overgrown. Across the yard is a passage with a worn stone floor. They say the monster made it worn, but how can they be sure? Along the passage are some steps curving underground. They say the monster thunders down, but I can't hear a sound. Down the steps is a heavy door with a lock and an iron key. I've never heard them speak of that, so let's open the door and see. It's a dark, dank dungeon with a bed and a wooden chair. But who is sitting very still in the shadows there? Hmm, it's the monster. Run! Out the door, up the stairs, along the passage, across the yard, over the drawbridge, across the moat, down the hill, and far away. Oh, the monster won't catch us today. But just a minute. What's that shout? Thanks for letting me out. Oh my goodness. Keep an eye out for a monster. Well, I've got five little monsters who are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Well, his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So four great big monsters were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Well, mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So three great big monsters were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So two great big monsters were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So that left one great big monster who was jumping on the bed. When she fell off, oh, she bumped her head. So her mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So no more monsters. Well, we're gonna have another story and it's called, I've Got an Elephant. This is written by Anne Ginkle and illustrated by Janie Bynum. And it is published by, it's gonna be a mystery. I guess I'll have to look at the end. Do any of you like elephants? Do any of you have an elephant for a pet? I bet not. I've got an elephant who sleeps in my bed in Superman pajamas that are yellow, blue, and red. Though other kids have teddy bears to cuddle up at night, 
I've got an elephant to hug me every night. But when I go to school, he gets lonely. And then he goes out and brings home an elephant friend. I've got two elephants who come with me to school. The kids on the bus all think we're really cool. They know their ABCs and can count to 10 by twos. They help me with my reading if I ever get confused. But when I go shopping, they get lonely. And then they go out and bring home an elephant friend. So I've got three elephants who run through the mall, making stops at all the shops they love the best of all. They wiggle into fancy shoes and try on every dress. And sometimes I have to scold them because they make an awful mess. But when I go swimming, they get lonely. And then they go out and bring home an elephant friend. I've got four elephants who swim in the pool. They're really good at backstroke as a general rule. They splash each other silly when it gets too hot. A cool spray of water, well, it really hits the spot. But when I go to ballet, they get lonely. And then they go out and bring home an elephant friend. So I've got five elephants who dance so gracefully. They've learned how to point their toes and how to bend their knees. My ballet teacher says that they make a pretty sight in their pretty pink tutus and they're in their ballerina tights. But when I go to the movies, well, they get lonely. And then, why they go out and bring home an elephant friend. I've got six elephants who love the movies so. They get drinks and popcorn to munch on the show if the movie gets too scary, then they hide their little eyes with their big floppy ears and they cry elephant cries. But when I go fishing, they get lonely. And then, well, they go out and bring home another elephant friend. So I've got seven elephants who fish so patiently. They sit together on the bank as quiet as can be. They hardly make a sound. They never breathe a word. Elephants in fishing hats, well, that's really quite absurd. But when I go play dress up, they get lonely. And then, why, they go out and bring home an elephant friend. So I've got eight elephants who prance down the stairs, pretending they are royalty and putting on airs. They gather round the table for a royal English tea, enjoying sipping from their teacups and having fun with me. But when I go sledding, they get lonely. And then, well, they go out and bring home an elephant friend. So I've got nine elephants who share my little sled with true story runners that are painted bright red. We sit by the window and wait for it to snow. And then we climb on that sled and down the hill we go. But when I go to take a bath, they get lonely. And then, can you say it with me this time? They go out and bring home an elephant friend. Enough! Oh, she put the ball on a bus. I've got 10 elephants who live in the zoo with a tiger, a crocodile, and 20 kangaroos. I visit them on Sundays and bring them things to eat, like popcorn and pizza and, oh, a very special peanut treat. But when I get lonely, I go out and then I find another playmate. I make another friend. <laughs> well, which finger play do you think we should do now? Hmm. Should we shake our sillies? Can you shake, shake, 
Shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up so you can jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, Jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake? Shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, we're going to have another story, but we better be careful and we better watch out for wolf. This is written by Annika Ambrose Rissi and illustrated by Charles Santoso. This little piggy went to market for some flour, sugar, some butter and eggs, and some chocolate for the cake. Watch out for the wolf, the other piggies warned. Now this little piggy stayed home through the morning to blow up balloons, twist streamers, wrap presents, and try out noisemakers and hats. There's wolf, Piggums cried. Close the shutters, quick! Is she gone? Piggleton asked. Piggums peeked. I think so. The piggies agreed. Whew. That was close. Now the third little piggy sped over the river and through the woods from hutch to hole to burrow to nest Beware, Owl said. Wolf just passed by. Eek, Piggy cried. She might see me. That would be disastrous, Frog croaked. So Piglet hurried home and changed into her best dress while Pigbert helped Piggy frost and decorate the cake. Piggums picked a posy to finish the bouquet and Piggleton tried the roast beasts. Not beasts. Beats. Everything was ready. Everything except. Welcome, welcome, Piggum said. Welcome to the party. Hurry, come inside. Well, this little piggy was the lookout. She sounded the alarm. Wolf is coming. Wolf is coming. The smallest little piggy squealed. Wee, wee, wee. Everybody hide. Well, the animals leaped to their hiding places right in the nick of time. Wolf banged on the door. Little pigs, little pigs, she called. Oh, the piggies huddled closer. They dared not make a sound. The door creaked open. Creak. The animals jumped and screamed, surprise! Happy birthday, Wolf. We baked you a cake, said Piggle. Oh, make a wish. So the little piggies gathered round as Wolf's joy jaws opened wide and she hopped 
and she puffed and she blew the candles out in one ferocious breath. And that was what was in the envelope. You are invited to a surprise birthday party, but shh, it's a secret. Don't tell a wolf. And you know what? I think we did a pretty good job not telling a wolf. Well, I've got five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, the weather has kind of warmed up here, so it's not icy like it was yesterday. But it's still not the right weather for a turtle to be out. This story is called Ridiculous. It's written by Michael Coleman with pictures by Gwyneth Williamson. Look at that poor turtle. And this is published by Little Tiger Press. Oh, hum, yawned Mr. Tortoise. Winter is here. So it is, yawned Mrs. Tortoise. Oh, come on, Shelly. Time for bed. But I don't feel sleepy yet, said Shelby. Oh, ridiculous, cried Mr. Tortoise. All tortoises go to sleep for the winter. But why, asked Shelly. Because it's cold outside and there's no food. But I don't want to go to sleep, said Shelly. I want to see what winter's about. Ridiculous, said Mr. and Mrs. Tortoise together. Who ever heard of a tortoise outside in winter? Well, soon Mr. Tortoise began to snore. And not long after that, Mrs. Tortoise began to snore. And not long after that, Shelley left her warm bed of leaves and out she went through a hole in the shed so she could see what winter was like. Outside the shed, Shelly blinked. There was snow and ice everywhere, even on the duck pond and on the hill. And as she lumbered along, a duck spotted her. A tortoise out in winter, quacked the duck. Ridiculous. No, it isn't, said Shelly. Oh, no? Well, then let's see you break through the ice to get food like I can. Ha, <laughs> ha, quack. Hmm. He's right, thought Shelley. I can't do that. I don't have a beak. Well, as Shelley began to walk up the hill, she met a dog. A tortoise out in winter, barked the dog. Ridiculous. No, it isn't, said Shelley, feeling a little cross. Oh, no? Well, then let's see you keep warm by running around like I can. <laughs> hmm. He's right thought Shelley sadly. I can't do that either. Well, the dog ran off after a cat, but the cat climbed up a tree and she looked down at Shelley. A tortoise out in winter, meowed the cat. Ridiculous. No, it isn't, said Shelley even more crossly. Oh no? Well, then let's see you run into a nice warm house as quickly as I can. <laughs> Meow. Well, she's right, thought Shelley, shivering with cold. I can't run like a dog or a cat. I'm just too slow. Well, the cat raced off into her house before the dog could catch her. And Shelley, well, Shelley trudged toward the top of the hill where she met a bird. A tortoise out in winter, chirped the bird. Oh, ridiculous. 
ridiculous. No, it isn't, snapped Shelley. Oh, no? Well, then let's see you fly home and cuddle up with your family like I can. <laughs> Gee, Papa. Well, of course I can't fly, thought Shelley. I can't even hop. Well, Shelley felt cold and miserable. She remembered her warm, cozy bed and a tear trickled down her cheek. They're all right, she thought. A tortoise out in winter is ridiculous. And she was so sad she didn't notice the big patch of ice ahead. And she slipped on it and fell over backward and began to slide down the hill faster and faster she went, faster than a dog could run, faster than a cat, until suddenly she hit a bump and she flew into the air like a bird. Whee! And then with a thump, Shelley landed on the icy duck pond and slid toward a hole in the shed, her hole in the shed. But, oh dear, it was all covered up with ice <laughs> laughed the duck. What did I say? Where's your beak to break the ice with? I don't have a beak, thought Shelley, but I do have a shell. And tucking her head inside, she broke through the ice into the shed and she was home. Well, hearing all the noise, Mrs. Tortoise woke up. You haven't been outside, have you, Shelley? She asked. A tortoise out in winter? Aw, oh, Mom, said Shelley, snuggling into bed. But before she could say ridiculous, well, she was fast asleep. So I'll be surprised if you see, ever see a tortoise out in winter. Well, I have a little turtle, can you make a fist like this, who lives in a box. He swims in the puddles and he climbs on rocks. He snapped at a mosquito. He snapped at a flea. He snapped at a minnow and he snapped at me. Well, he caught the mosquito and he caught the flea. He caught the minnow, but you know what? He didn't catch me. Well, we're going to have another story about a turtle, but this turtle well, wants to be a penguin. So this is called Turtles Penguin Day, and it's written and illustrated by Valeri Gorbachev, and it's published by Alfred A. Knopf. Do you recognize that that's a turtle inside a jacket that makes him look like a penguin? One night, Father Turtle read Little Turtle a story about penguins. And when Little Turtle fell asleep, he dreamed he was a penguin. He played on the ice and dove into the water and swam and splashed with the other penguins. Let's play this. Now in the morning, Little Turtle decided he wanted to be a penguin. He put on his red slippers and he waddled from side to side. After breakfast, Little Turtle had an idea. He went up to the attic and found his grandfather's black jacket in an old chest. It was too big for him, but he put it on and looked at himself in the mirror and said, hmm, now I look like a real penguin. Well, hello, little turtle, called the kids on the school bus. Great costume. Well, thank you, said little turtle. I'm a penguin from the South Pole. Miss Dog, look, said the children when they got to school and saw their teacher. We have a penguin in our class. Oh my, said Miss Dog. Why, you do look a little like a penguin today, little turtle. But why? Well, we want to be penguins too, cried all the children. So while Miss Dog read to them from the penguin book, they all tried to pass balls to each other using just their feet the way penguins do with their eggs. And during music, they all danced a waddling penguin dance. 
And at nap time, all of them dreamed penguin dreams. That night, Little Turtle ate fish-shaped crackers with dinner because, well, penguins love fish. And before he went to sleep, Turtle brushed his penguin beak. Even when Little Turtle got into bed, he still pretended to be diving and swimming with his penguin friends. Then Father Turtle brought a new bedtime story to read. This is the story of a little monkey who lives in a beautiful jungle, he said. Really, said Little Turtle. A monkey? And when Little Turtle fell asleep that night, he dreamed he was a funny little monkey. <laughs> Can you guess what he's gonna wear to school tomorrow? And at the end of this book, they've got some very interesting facts about penguins. Did you know that there are 17 different species of penguins? There are. Well, can you, let's see here. Hmm. Which one have we not done? We haven't done anything with bubble gum, have we? So can you reach in your pocket and pull out a piece of pretend bubble gum? Unwrap it and pop it in your mouth Chew it up until it's all soft and squishy so we can do something fun with it. Ready, set, go. Must be ready, don't you think? Put out your hand and <coughs> spit your gum in it and then your hands on top and oh no now your hands are stuck together with sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum stick it on your nose do we want to leave it there goodness no so let's say the word that we do on um, stick Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. Did we do that? I don't remember. But on stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. And I think it's time for a flannel board story. And this is called Mother, Mother, I Want Another. And it's from a book by Maria Pulushkin. Well, it was bedtime at the mouse house. And Mrs. Mouse took baby mouse to his room and she tucked him in his bed and she read him a story and then she gave him a bedtime kiss. Good night, she said. But as she was leaving, baby mouse started to cry. Oh, well, why are you crying? She said, I want another mother. Another mother, said Mrs. Mouse. Oh dear me, where will I find another mother for my baby? But she went to look anyway. And when she came back, 
she had Mrs. Duck. Please, Mrs. Duck, come to our house and help put Baby Mouse to bed. Tonight he wants another mother. So Mrs. Duck started to sing. Quack, quack, mousy, don't you fret. I'll bring you worms both nice and wet. But what did Baby Mouse say? Mother, mother, I want another. So Mrs. Duck went and brought back Mrs. Frog. And Mrs. Frog came and she started to sing. Croak, croak, mousy, close your eyes. I'll bring you some big fat flies. But Baby Mouse said, oh, mother, mother, I want another. So Mrs. Frog went and came back with Mrs. Pig. And Mrs. Pig sang a song. Oink, oink, mousy, go to sleep. I'll bring some carrots for you to keep. But Baby Mouse said, oh, mother, mother, I want another. So Mrs. Pig went and came back with Mrs. Donkey. And Mrs. Donkey started to sing. Hee-haw, mousy, hush a -bye. Her voice is even the worst of all of them, I think. I'll sing for you a lullaby. But Baby Mouse had had enough. No more mothers, he shouted. I want another kiss. Really, said Mrs. Mouse. Well now, said Mrs. Duck. Indeed, said Mrs. Pig. Oh, said Mrs. Frog. I see, said Mrs. Donkey. So one by one, they each gave Baby Mouse a kiss. Mrs. Pig gave him a kiss. And Mrs. Donkey gave him a kiss. And Mrs. Frog gave him a kiss. And Mrs. Duck gave him a kiss. And then Mrs. Mouse gave Baby Mouse a drink of water, and she tucked in his blanket, and she gave him a kiss. And Baby Mouse smiled and said, may I have another, Mother? Of course, said Mrs. Mouse, and she leaned it over and gave him another kiss. <gasps> and that sent him off to dreamland. Almost sent him off the board, didn't it? <laughs> well, let's finish up with one of our stories from Sandra Boynton. And tonight we're going to be having night, night, little Pookie. I'll move in a little closer. Oh, Pookie, it's time for bed now, said Mother Pig. So tonight will you wear your pajamas with cars? Or do you prefer the pajamas with stars? Stars and cars, said little Pookie, wearing half of each. Now up to the sink on your own tippy toes. You can brush your fine teeth and you can wash your fine nose. And mommy's nose too. Then you zip off to bed. Well, what do you know? Come out, little Pookie. Where, oh, where did you go? <laughs> Surprise! I'll tuck in your covers. I'll turn out the light. I'll give you three kisses and whisper good night. Good night, Pookie ears. Good night, Pookie nose. Good night, Pookie eyes that are ready to close. There are gentle winds blowing and stars all above you. Night, night, little Pookie. I love you and 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 love you. 
Night, night, little mommy, said little Pookie. And he went to sleep. So those are our stories for tonight. Is it almost your bedtime? I hope you enjoyed them, and I hope you'll come back next week for some more stories with Bernard and me from Wood Library. Thanks for watching.